look around you. Look around you. Just look around you. There. Now take a closer look. Have you worked out what we're looking for? Correct. The answer is name colon slash carrot backslash w open brace for close braces. S backslash w open brace two close brace space backslash w open brace eight close brace dollar sign slash space o colon slash carrot backslash w plus dollar sign slash. Write that in your copybook now. all your devices before we get started gotta put hands on all of them hello and welcome to lucky paper radio my name is andy i'm here with my co-host anthony sapperling token challenge coin maddox uh i keep forgetting to do that i do mean to put a sapperling in my wallet just so i always have sapperling yeah and then if you're like at a restaurant or a bar with anthony and it comes time to pay that tab and you can show a sapperling token and he can't he has to pay the tab that's the rule <laughs> Sure, sure. I don't I don't know how this game works both ways, but um sure, whatever. <laughs> yeah, you I guess you can't really not everyone's consenting to be part of the right, Sapperling. Yeah. I guess if if you listen to the show, if you like meet Anthony in public, let's say hypothetically at KubeCon and you're talking about the show, then he'll know that you're a listener and then you're by association you are involved in the Sapperling token challenge coin. In a way, aren't we all just Sapperlings though? What is that way? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> Could you describe the way in which Just we're all little, like little particles, part of a big system, not really having any control, and sometimes you know blocking a big creature and getting squished. You know, being I like to sacrifice to the machine. You know, something I like to say that I made up, Anthony, is uh-huh. that we're really just made of star stuff. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that thing that you famously, you Carl Sagan, famously made <laughs> yep. up. Yep, just made of stars all the way down. How do we transition from that to Scryfall? Hmm. And if you want to find every single card that makes or cares about sapperlings in some way, we're going to tell you how to do that on this episode. You should be doing all the segues. That was way better than anything I've ever done. Great. Let's really talk about the segue in detail. On this episode, like Anthony said, we're going to be talking about how to use Scryfall to get the most out of magic. No matter what your goals are, whether it's building cubes, building EDH decks, working in Constructed, Scryfall is just... It cannot be overstated. An incredible, incredible resource that we are all very lucky to have uh, access to. Those of us that remember trying to look for magic cards before Scryfall existed, it it, it paints a very stark picture, Anthony, of uh, how much better Scryfall is than the competition. It really is. I mean, it's, it's honestly just one of the best pieces of software I get to use on a daily basis, and I adore it. This is kind of a basic topic. We just want to talk about how to use this tool and talk a little bit about magic cards in general and how to search and find them. But it's such a critical part of our sort of magic experience, of everyone's magic experience, that I think it's worth taking a step back and not taking it for granted so much and actually just talking about it. So hopefully this is going to be helpful if you are newer to the game and, you know, building your first couple commander decks or getting into cube. But hopefully we can also give you some some tips and talk about some of the, the more extreme examples of how to find cards that will be useful to everyone. Do you think if you were to add up all the time you've spent playing Magic the Gathering and then add up all the time you've spent on the website scryfall.com, which number do you think is bigger? Oh, no no question. More more time on Scryfall. I think so, too. So really, what we're saying is Scryfall is most of Magic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, when I sit down and I'm like, oh, I'm going to play Magic tonight, what that usually means is I'm going to go on Scryfall, I'm going to go around looking for cards, I'm going to sort some things. That's I mean, what most of playing Magic is. I mean, you is. joke, but like, I'm not me, joking. <laughs> to me, that is a big part of Magic as a hobby. It's that yeah, I don't always get to play, and having other avenues by which to enjoy this hobby that I love when I'm not playing, especially important for those of us that don't play digitally, it's incredible to have access to Scryfall as a resource just to brew up some random idea, just to satisfy some curiosity you have about the history of magic and the types of cards that are out there. And I remember very specifically when I got back into the game, spending hours just 
looking at all the cards that have been printed since I quit when I was 12 years old and being like, wow, what are Eldrazi? Excuse me, what is this? This is a 1515, and it's just it's a joy to do it. Yeah, I mean, on one hand, there's something really kind of glorious about, we talk about the golden age of magic sometimes, of when you didn't really know what was out there, and someone would show up and, and pull out some card, play some card against you that you'd never seen or heard of before. Which really, that's... that was like maybe the first nine months of magic. It might have been a, you know, maybe a, a year set and a half. would come out, uh, which is kind of an awesome idea, an awesome experience. We don't have that anymore, but we have this different experience of like full, complete access, and there's a lot to be enjoyed about that as well. Yeah. Before we get into our main topic, though, we are going to be doing a pack one pick one from a listener submitted cube. It has been a minute since we've done one of these, Anthony, because we've been doing all manner of set review episodes and cube primers for CubeCon and had special guests on the show. So it's been a minute since we came back to just our old tried and true listener submitted cubes. For those of you that have not been paying attention for the past couple episodes, we now have a form on our website where you can submit your cube. So if you've emailed it in in the past and we have not read it on the show, you should go submit it to that form because all of our entries are coming through that form now. Emails will not be responded to or uh, or acknowledged. And then, Anthony, you have written a little script here to uh, somewhat equitably give a chance for everybody that submits a cube to have their cube on the show. Do you want to explain that one more time, just in, in brief detail? Well, we weren't sure if we wanted to prioritize the people that had submitted their cubes soonest, you know, just go top to bottom, whoever submitted first, or be a little bit more random so that we could let, you know, everybody have a chance, because there are a lot of submissions at this point. So I wrote a little proprietary algorithm that does a little combo of both people that submitted earlier are prioritized but everybody's got a shot and it's totally randomized and what did the algorithm tell us we were reviewing today anthony so we're going to do a pack one from robbie's the supreme commander cube and they actually said that this is the first time they're about to draft it tomorrow night which is sometime in the past who so, knows when that was uh, hopefully it's happened by now unless so. they submitted this yesterday which they did not it's happened by now well, so this episode's not coming out for two well. weeks anyway so Excellent. by the time you hear this robbie will have definitely drafted this cube at least once so like you said, I think this is a commander cube. What are the stipulations we're working with here? Do we have to draft our commanders? What are the special rules we're so dealing with? So you can with? draft your commanders. If you do, you get a special bonus of an extra land. Everybody also gets a command tower because it's commander. Why not? Uh, we're going to be drafting from six packs of 15. And I believe wow. this is for just a four-player group because they mentioned that we're going to take two cards out of each pack and we're going to see each pack twice. So we get to pick two cards out of this pack. A little different from our usual cube so area we're of interest. 90 cards. That's a lot of cards. Yeah, I don't, I'm don't. i actually not sure what the deck size is, but we're going to have a lot of cards to be playing I would with. have presumed from that that the deck size is actually 100, like a traditional commander deck. Otherwise, I can't imagine why we're drafting 90 cards. That is a, a whole lot of cards to be drafting. You said you can draft your commander. We have to draft our commander, right? Uh, so I, I think if I'm understanding the rules right, uh, you can draft your commander. You can use your commander from the cards you've drafted or pull one from outside the game. If you do draft it, you also get an extra fetch land. So there's a little bit of a motivation to try and draft your commander. Wow. Okay. That's a lot to think about. So we have our uh, first pack here. I'll, I'll read the pack. And then, as you said, I think we're getting two picks out of this pack, correct? Two picks. Okay. Two of our 90 picks are going to be on this first pack. So the pack is Vivid Creek. Archaeomancer, Venser, Shaper Savant, Ganti, Lord of Luxury, Bastion of Remembrance, Rise of the Dark Realms, Murderous Rider, Blood Crypt, Wood Elves, Sakura Tribe Elder, Gruel Signet, Carador, Ghost Chieftain, Mines Aglow, Taiga, and End Rays Forerunners. I actually never drafted Battle Bond. That was the, or Commander Legends. Those are both two picks per pack sets, right? Both Battle Bond and Commander Legends. I never drafted either of those. I don't think I've ever drafted a two picks per pack cube before. I know you have. What are the considerations here? I mean, for me, the bigger question, I guess one consideration about the double picks is you do get to send a little bit more of a signal. You know, we can just take two cards in one color and focus on that a little bit more. Obviously, if there's like a combo in the pack, we could take that. For me, the bigger consideration is this is a multiplayer environment, and that's not what we usually play. You know, we play some commander occasionally. We've done some multiplayer cubes, but that really changes card evaluations, both in terms of what's powerful and that... We're not necessarily just trying to, you know, draft the most powerful cards and curve out or like have a plan to control the game fully against one other player. There is this like politics aspect and maybe the strategy to win isn't just having the most powerful cards. So I'm sort of torn between two pairs of cards here. One is, I think, maybe the correct, most powerful, most flexible picks. And one is what I think I've, if I was just drafting this cube, this is what I would want to be doing to have the most fun with it. And because it is multiplayer, I could see that actually being the, the right choice. So for me, the safe pair is Sakura Tribe Elder and Grohl Signet, just cheap, efficient mana fixing. 
but I really just want to take Gonti Lord of Luxury and Rise of the Dark Realms because that seems like so much more fun. I've had a Gonti Commander deck and I love it. I think I would take Tribe Elder and Wood Elves actually over Gruel Signet, I think. I feel like the if you are in green, I feel like you get access to better ramp than the Signets. Like the value of the Signets in Commander is that you can play them outside of green. Unless, of course, they produce green, which is why some of the green signets are a little bit less valued. So I, I like the idea with Wood Elves here that I can get a much more reliable ramp target. I get my land. doesn't matter if the board gets wiped or someone casts a Vandal Blast or whatever. I get to keep that land and keep that advantage. And theoretically, you know, I'm seeing a Taiga in this pack, so we know there are some duels in this cube. I could, you know, fix my mana with that Wood Elves, regardless of what color I'm playing, whereas Gruul Signet kind of only fixes your mana if you are in red-green specifically. So I think those are my two picks. I think the other thing that I am looking at here is I don't know how many... I haven't looked at this list in detail. I don't know how many many colored commanders there are going to be, and Carador Ghost Chieftain is a solid three colors. I would be looking, given that we have to draft our commander and draft cards in that commander's color identity, I would be prioritizing many colored legends pretty highly here. And so Carador, I think, is a consideration. That is also a card that... you know I read in the description of this cube, this person is trying to capture the spirit of commander... Maybe before we started seeing a lot of commander-specific card designs being printed. And I know in that era of commander, Carador was a, a force to be reckoned with. So I think the other thing you could consider here is Carador and, I don't know, I guess maybe Gruul Signet to stay open. Because I agree Signet is the most open pick. So I think if you're committing to green, you take Wood Elves, Sakura, Tribe Elder. If you want to stay open, maybe it's Gruul Signet, Carador? I could see that, yeah. Hey, it's uh, Andy from the future editing the show. Yes, I I did forget about color identity and that you can't play a Gruul Signet alongside Carador. I'm very stupid. What can I say? Obviously, the pick is Carador and Sakura Tribe Elder if you're going to be doing the Carador thing. So there you go. Yeah, this is the kind of thing I have to drop this a few times before I would know how highly to rate many colored legends because I think it will be very important to get to the end of the draft and have a little pool of viable legends in the colors of cards you've prioritized to try and figure out what your actual best build is. I think one of the challenges though, and this is maybe a big challenge of like a commander cube draft in general is if we're taking Carador, we can either consider that that's our commander, we're just going to fully focus on that. Those, those are the colors we're taking. But if we don't end up in those colors, we just, there's not another three color legend necessarily in these colors that we're going to be able to pick up to play this card at all. So I feel like that's actually a little bit of a risky pick. It's definitely speculative. Yeah. I mean, I, I get part of it for me is that we're getting 90 cards. And so I maybe am not worried about having playables, but maybe I should be. And I'm more focused on like making sure I do have the right legend at the end of the draft when I need it. Uh, Fair. Though I guess there is that fallback of I could just take one from outside of the cube, but I need to see what that list looks like. A lot of complexity here in terms of just divergence from uh, what we think of as typical booster draft. So definitely a lot of things to consider. Thank you, Robbie, for submitting your cube. I hope your first draft went great, and you've done many more since then. The cube is uh, definitely very interesting. I can imagine that if you love this kind of era of Commander, then just getting to see more of cards from that era of Commander and doing a longer draft might be really fun. You just get to see more of the cards you love and make a big old deck full of uh, cards that bring you joy. Isn't that what it's all about in the end? It is. As mentioned, if you want to have your cube on Lucky Paper Radio, submit your link and the details to the form in the show notes and on our website. Scryfall, Anthony. Scryfall. 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 Put that down in your copy books. <laughs> Where do you want to start our conversation about Scryfall? So I, I think that first I just want to talk about a little more in detail how important finding cards is to Magic players. I mean, this, this is just such a big part of the hobby, especially if you're playing the formats that we play the most, Cube and Commander. If you're playing Modern or Standard, I feel like there's a, a smaller, more sort of known pool of cards that you're going to be playing with, that you're going to be putting in your deck. You might even be playing just with styles of decks that are already fairly established. There are are not maybe a ton of people that are on that bleeding edge of like finding brand new cards for modern that are going to totally change the format. It but definitely depends the kind of player you are. I think there's actually a fair number of players that do like to brew new decks, even if they acknowledge that it's very unlikely they're going to actually break the meta wide open and design a new tier one deck. I think a lot of the joy for some of those constructed formats comes from making your own brew, even if it's a you know tier two or tier two and a half list. Uh, I think people really do enjoy playing that way, even if they're competitively minded in some cases. Fair. I mean, even better. More more people that uh, that can get on the Scryfall bandwagon. Mm -hmm. But especially for Commander and Cube, where you can really play with any card you want. Like, there's going to be some Commander that makes some particular card relevant, or you're just designing in a certain space with Cube, or you want to play with certain kinds of card. <laughs> I love to play with certain kinds of card. <laughs> play with certain kinds of cards that 
finding new cards to play with is really critical. And that could be based on, you know, like we mentioned with Sapperlings, you just want to find every single card that has something to do with Sapperlings for your themed commander deck, or maybe you're building a cube with an enchantment theme and you want to find every single card that'll reward your players and encourage them to get into that enchantment type of deck. You're going to need Scryfall in order to be able to find those cards. Yeah, I mean, what we're talking about, like, these are creative acts, designing a cube, designing a deck, designing any kind of magic environment. It is a creative act, and I think being good at navigating Scryfall, like being a good librarian, essentially, of this enormous archive of raw material is how you know what you have access to, right? It's like it's like a painter not knowing what colors of paint they have, right? You need to understand what tools you have access to in order to reach your full potential of whatever design you're working on. Yeah, I mean, and there's how many magic cards now? Like over 25,000 or something? Maybe not quite I think, 25? I think it's more than that, and it's much, much, much more than that if you start counting all the versions of cards. That probably doesn't matter as much for designing things like cubes and commander decks. So honestly, it could. Like, in, a, in some instances, you know, people care about set cubes, and there's maybe a card that's been reprinted with, like, slightly different flavor or takes place on a different plane and so that could actually be relevant to people yeah or people even build commander decks all about one particular artist or about really narrow themes that that all that can be relevant or a a cube of all promos we've seen a lot of different creative uh takes on on both these formats so finding cards is super important and like you said scryfall is just such a great resource before this it was it was a a challenge sorry Uh, gatherer but you were not anywhere near as good as scryfall Yeah. Uh, So what Scryfall does is it lets you search through this huge database of magic cards. They have every single card recorded and they have a whole bunch of metadata about it. So you can search for any detail about the card, which means you can search for its name. You can search for what the card actually does, the text that's on it. You can search by different attributes like its power and toughness and mana cost, as well as all kinds of metadata about the card that maybe isn't intrinsic to the card itself, like how much it costs and what formats it's legal in and what the artist is and all kinds of things like that. And all those things could be relevant to the environment you're currently working on. I mean, I have recently been revisiting my monocolored starter deck project, which is unique among the cubes I've designed in that uh, it's at a very different kind of power level with very different kinds of restrictions on the cards that I'm playing. And so the number of searches I've done just trying to find like a decent white two drop that kind of fits the themes of this deck. I mean, Scryfall has been incredibly valuable there and and irreplaceably valuable in how it lets me actually again search through the hundreds maybe thousands of white two drops that exist and so the way that scryfall exposes this information lets you actually access this search is one of two ways they have their advanced search which is just a big form where all these different options are just laid out for you in a form where you can check the boxes for things that are relevant to you and narrow down your search that way, which is great if you just aren't really sure where to begin and you want to see those those options laid out. The other way is that you can search in their big friendly search bar using their special search syntax. And this is where I think it's just the, the power of it really comes through and it just makes finding cards so, so quick once you get comfortable with that syntax. That is true. I, I will say that if you are not familiar with Scryfall's advanced search, I would not advocate for jumping right into the advanced stuff you're talking about, I would say just start filling out that form a bunch, right? Like it's a little more time consuming and you do have additional things you can do through that interface of the more advanced syntax. But I think for like getting involved and getting interested in this, like knowing what's possible, I think one of the best ways to do that is actually just using that big form. It's, it's very user friendly as far as big forms go. I'm going to ad- advocate for the text input because it's just so much more fun, <laughs> right? I, I think maybe uh, you don't appreciate how complicated and and intimidating that that is to a lot of people. Given that you are an experienced computer programmer, when you wrote some of the articles on our website about how to use Scryfall and use the regular expressions and whatnot, I at that time was actually still pretty much just using the form. Uh, I was like, you know, and I've slowly just over the years come more and more over to the side of just like knowing what all the little shortcuts are in the syntax. But even I, who am also a computer programmer, but maybe, uh, you know, less programmery uh-huh you're one of those light programmery programmers. Yeah, I'm, I'm a medium developer <laughs> even i found it way easier to use that form it's, it's a it's a good form so i, I would say that uh we'll, we'll talk a lot about the advantages of using the advanced syntax and using regular expressions and using whatever cool invisible technologies there are behind that just like simple search input but don't let any of that uh, dissuade you from just using the advanced search form if uh, if that's more accessible to you fair enough i will say that even though this syntax, it sounds super intimidating, it's like, oh, this like custom language you have to learn, the basics of it are actually super, super straightforward. All it is is that we've talked about all these different attributes of cards, the name, the type, the color, any other aspect that you can think of. Type in that word, a colon, and then the value that you're looking for. So if you want to find all the red cards, it's just 
color colon red with no spaces in between. And that's really the core of it. It's just we have aspects of cards and the value you are interested in finding. Yeah, it does quickly get pretty complicated, though. So color colon red is going to find you any card that is at all red, whereas color equals red is going to find you cards that are only red and not red green. That is and not... true. So every little character, I mean, that's the beauty of a syntax like this is that it's very efficient, right? Mm -hmm. You change one character and it changes everything. You don't have to, like, fiddle around with some big complicated form. But that means that every character you type is meaningful. Uh, and a lot of these words have shortcuts. So you can, instead of typing color, just type C. That takes a little bit of time to learn those little shortcuts. That C is short for color. CI is short for color identity. MV for mana value. But eventually, you can you can learn all these things. And it feels almost like a superpower to be able to just kind of like yeah, tap absolutely. out a thing and be like, I know I'm looking for this one card. And all I can remember about it is that it was in like this set. And it does like and one of its abilities is like partially this. And then you type in just a few little characters and you're looking at that card immediately. It feels great. It really does. Something else that I love about it is it just makes it easy to reference searches or share searches when you can, rather than say, oh, fill out this whole bunch of particular fields, just copy and paste that little search bit and, and share that with somebody so they can put it into their own scryfall. Okay, well, maybe... to be fair, you can do that with the advanced form too, because when you hit search, it puts the summary of that search that's in true. the search yeah, bar. That's true. Yeah, that's a great point, which is actually a great way to sort of learn and navigate and, sure. and improve at that. Something else I think is really critical about this is we're going to go into more detail about all these different things you can do with this search. It is not important to go and memorize all of the options and learn everything no. you can at once. What's really important is just learning what is kind of vaguely possible. What are the things that you can do? And then when you're actually trying to implement that, when you want to reach for a particular tool, Scryfall just has a great page that actually lists here are all the options you have. And you can go out and look up, oh, what's the difference between color identity and color and things like that. So just get a sense of what's actually possible. So where these searches get really valuable is when you can start combining multiple terms. If you either, you know, through the advanced search, just choose multiple different aspects of the card you're looking for, or in the, the search bar, uh, you've got your color colon red, you can then add mana value, MV, whatever you want to do, less than three, you can easily just now find all the cards that match multiple different search criteria. So if you're looking specifically for your aggressive red commander deck, or you're trying to flesh out the red aggressive section of your cube, you can really quickly find all of the red cards with mana value less than a certain amount. Yeah, so when I'm searching for cards for my cube, for example, I just type mana value less than four, and, and you just, then you just, leave, you just leave that there forever. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I mean, that's definitely true, honestly, when I'm looking at a lot of sets. Like, when I'm looking through a new set, I will just sort of accumulate things that I'm trying to exclude from my search and say, okay, well, I'm, I'm first interested in looking for cheap things, and then maybe I'll realize, okay, this one mechanic altogether is not really for me, so I'll just throw that into my search and sort of keep, as I'm, as I'm going through the set, narrowing it down and filtering out things that maybe aren't relevant to me, and it just is, like you said, kind of a superpower to be able to navigate a set of cards in that way. And you do start to learn the things that you care about, right? So... For example, I only play in paper, and I found myself appending to all of my searches for the past few months, not digital, right? Not colon yep. digital, or minus is digital, and that would basically take out all of the cards that are only available digitally. And this is a great example of a thing that Scryfall actually adds on top of the actual metadata about the card, right? Like... Digital is not an attribute of the card. That is the thing that Scryfall developers have added to say, like, this is a card that is only available on Alchemy or, you know, a digital-only card. And so that's very valuable. We have a lot of uh, friends and listeners that only care about old border cards. They're making an old border EDH deck. They're making an old border cube. And so they can just type, is colon old? And that will return anything in the old card frame, which is, again is old is not an attribute of a magic card. That is the thing that a Scryfall has added on top of that, which provides a lot of value and makes it way easier to find what you're looking for. Yeah, absolutely. So there's a couple different levels here to these searches, and I'm not going to read where you put quotes and colons and all the really specific details, because again, go look that up in the reference. But just to give you a sense of the things that are possible, the first level is kind of just you're looking for a single value that you want all cards that match some aspect. The next level is you can actually, for anything that has a sense of order, like numeric values or even things like sets that are ordered in terms of years, things like that, you can also use greater than or less than in place of the colon to find everything that is greater or less than that value. So if you want small mana values, you want big powers, whatever you're looking for, you can use that on any kind of ordered value. And then the, the next layer is actually combining multiple terms. So you just in the search syntax or in that advanced search, just add multiple different criteria to find things that match exactly both of those criteria. And you can add, obviously, as many as you want. So you can really get really specific about it and say you want only the old border frame cards that match a particular mana value that have power greater than a certain thing, whatever it is that you're looking for. 
In addition to matching only cards that fit multiple specific criteria, you can actually negate things like you're describing and say you want things that don't match a particular criteria, which, like we're saying, is really useful when you're filtering through a bunch of cards. You know, maybe you start with one search and it returns a whole bunch of cards and it's just more than you can reasonably go through. You can start adding particular negation terms to exclude sets of cards that you are discovering are less appropriate. Similarly, you can also find cards that match multiple different criteria by putting them in parentheses and putting the word or in between. This is where you start getting into things that you can't necessarily do with the advanced search form, yeah. but the syntax lets you do these really powerful searches. So that's really useful if you, for example, you're looking for removal spells, but some destroy, some exile, some do some other effect. You can just Phase start... out. <laughs> <laughs> sure, why not? You can start assembling a more advanced search where multiple criteria along one particular axis could be could be relevant or a thing that i find i end up doing all the time is i don't really care if something is an instant or a sorcery when i'm looking for a particular effect so i'll just where wow, i would have big if true big statement here <laughs> instant sorceries don't matter they're basically don't the matter same. it's the same i mean maybe it's a creature with flash but you can then just say okay in parentheses i'm going to say type instant type sorcery or it has flash, which we'll get into the text box search a little bit more, but just put all of those parameters in parentheses with ors in between, and now I can add whatever other terms I'm interested in. Yeah, I mean, I think a great, very practical example there is if you care only about instant speed effects, it can be hard to find instance and things with flash, which could be any other card type. You can say, give me instance or any card type with flash, and then on top of that, type in the other parameters you have, whether it's a specific line of rules text, whether it's a particular color, and that will show you all of the instant speed ways to do the thing that you're searching for. Absolutely. So let's actually talk about, I think, the most important part, arguably the most important part of cards, which is the text box. We can talk about all these sort of more concrete properties of cards, like the mana cost and, and the type of spell, things like that. But really critically is what the cards actually do. And this is where things get a little bit more complicated because it can be harder to quantify what it is you're looking for. And magic is a complicated game and similar effects can happen in a lot of different ways that are worded differently. Almost always do, I would say. Like, I mean, magic has been around for a very long time. We've seen many different takes on similar kinds of game effects. I mean, removal is a great example. If you're looking to negate an opponent's threat or eliminate that threat to you, there's destroying it, there's exiling it, there's putting a pacifism on it, there is giving it shadow and making its power zero. <laughs> there's, yep, there's, there's, there's <laughs> turning it into a vehicle. There's turning it into a frog. <laughs> <laughs> there's all kinds of ways you can get rid of that. And that's just the nature of a game that has been in development for 30 years and with 30,000 cards in it, basically. There's just going to be a lot of different variations on similar kinds of effects, which can make it very difficult to dig through and find the things you're actually looking for. But for many cases, this is where the thing that you're looking for is actually happening. There's not a lot of people that are building, like, my commander deck is all about things that have power three. It's more likely my commander deck's about things that care about sapperlings or things that care about power in general. Mm -hmm. So this is where you're really going to want to dig into uh, the cards and learn about how to search for them effectively. So I said that all the names of things is pretty obvious. You know, you search for power equals five. That's very easy. The one that is a little bit confusing is the full card text, which is... Oracle is the name of the parameter in this, the search syntax. Yeah, and, and Oracle, for people that don't know what that word means, obviously the rules of magic have changed over the years and things have been adjusted. And so a lot of older cards, the actual text printed on the card does not conform with magic's current rules. And right, so, it might say, hence the creature is put into a graveyard. <laughs> I love to make people read the full text of Tano's coffin whenever I play it in my old Border Commander deck. So... What the Oracle text does is it basically normalizes all of those card texts for all the cards in Magic's history to comport with Magic's current rules, which means that, especially on really, really old cards, uh, the text can actually be quite different in a lot of times from what's actually printed on the card. Right, which is actually great for us, both because as players it means that old cards which are written in ways that were confusing or don't really fit with contemporary rules, when they get reprinted, we get more consistent rules text. But also, yeah, they're updating this text for old cards that even aren't necessarily reprinted, which just means that when we're looking at the card, maybe they don't do exactly what is printed on the card, but for the purpose of searching for cards, it makes it much, much easier since all these old cards are going to be templated in, in more familiar ways that make sense to us as contemporary wizards. And and by far the biggest and most common example of this is the uh, the big retcon to burn spells that, is that around a cons block or something? Basically, yeah, it, it used to be a planeswalker damage redirection rule, with which newer players might not be familiar with. You know, now we know we can just target planeswalkers themselves. They are permanent, they can be targeted with burn spells or whatever, as long as the spell says you can target it. Uh, it used to be that planeswalkers basically 
were treated as like a, an extension of the player's life total. And so if you would deal damage to a player, you could instead choose to redirect some or all of that damage to the Planeswalker instead. And so basically at some point, they changed that rule. And so there is a wide swath of burn spells over Magic's history that say on the card, deal damage to target creature or player. But actually, if you read the Oracle text, it includes Planeswalkers or it says any target. I thought it was very interesting when they did this, Anthony, that the actual text printed on like an alpha lightning bolt became true for the first time since alpha, right? The text on, the, on lightning bolt says like deals three damage to any target. And then shortly after that happened, they made it so the targets had to be more specific and named and they specifically chose creature or player. And then, you know, 25 years later, we go back to saying actually any target is fine. And so the alpha text on a lightning bolt is uh, pretty accurate. Finally, you can use your alpha lightning bolt again and, mm -hmm. and not confuse players with it. All that is to say that it's a little bit quirky and historical, but Oracle is the word we use for searching the full rules text of magic cards. And you can even go a little bit further and use full Oracle or FO as the, the keyword, which will search the whole card text plus the reminder text to make your search even more inclusive, which is great when you have keyword abilities that just, you know, maybe your keyword has add plus one plus one counters or create a certain kind of token buried inside that reminder text. If you want to make sure you find that as well, use the full Oracle keyword. And this is really, again, the meat of finding cards that are relevant for whatever your theme is. If you're looking for those Enchantments Matter cards, or if you're looking for a particular tribe, things like that, searching for cards that actually reference those words that are relevant to your theme is how you're going to pull up everything that, that you want. There are a couple little quirks about the way that magic cards are written that also makes this a lot easier. One simple one is just that whenever a card mentions its own name on in the sort of Scryfall Oracle text, uh, you can sort of imagine there's a tilde in that place as well. So if you're searching for cards that whenever they attack, they'll often say whenever Krenko attacks, do this thing. In your search, you can omit the name and include a tilde and you'll find all creatures that reference their own name in that way. Yeah, the tilde is basically like the name wild card character in your right, search. Right, exactly. Another thing to note is that mana symbols, and really all card symbols, are written in a very particular way, where there's usually a letter, sometimes a couple letters in curly brackets, and you can go ahead and just use those in your searches as well. So if you're looking for things that cost red mana, you can put a R in curly braces in your search for the oracle text and find things that have red mana in their text box. This is where I'll add one tip, which I think is really important. Uh, again, we're looking at uh, changes in Oracle text over time. Mana pools used to be a thing, and so it used to be when I was searching for cards that added mana, I would just kind of add the word mana pool to my search, and it would find all of the cards that put things in my mana pool, which was something that added mana. When they got rid of that, the uh, Oracle text got a lot shorter and actually harder to search. And so it's true, yeah. Scryfall has a great uh, feature now where you can just type adds colon any color symbol, adds G, adds U, and it will return every single card that adds that type of mana, which uh, is very, very useful. And something I think maybe a lot of people don't realize. Another thing that's really important to notice about cards is that the templating is very consistent for a lot of effects. We talked about how there can be a lot of different ways to accomplish a certain thing, but when it comes down to it, cards that actually do function the same way are going to be written the same way, which again goes back to the Oracle text that is constantly kept up to date and in sync. And this especially is useful for things like activated and triggered abilities. Every single card that has an activated ability is going to include a colon in that rules text. So if you want to find cards that have activated abilities, you can really quickly get to a, to shortcut that just by typing Oracle colon colon. Uh, <laughs> Similarly, all triggered abilities will have either the words when or whenever in them. So if you're looking for triggered abilities, you can just search for when or whenever and find those. The consistency is, really is a huge accomplishment. Thinking about the size of this database and the work that the rules team has to do to keep this consistent, it's a, it's a huge task that they've done here to actually make sure that all these cards from the past 30 years of Magic's history are consistently formatted. Is there anything else that you think is really valuable for searching the, the full text of cards, or can we get into my favorite, favorite subject? No, I don't think so. I guess I would advocate for, especially for people that are newer with this, maybe don't fret so hard about narrowing down your text search to be exactly what you want and excluding every single thing you don't want, especially early on. 
and instead just be willing to like do a decent enough job and then maybe sort through the results manually to find what you're looking for. I think here the the sorting options are actually really valuable. Yeah, that's a so, great point. So uh, I found myself recently, um, the default sort I believe is alphabetical. Uh, I found myself recently sorting by set release basically just show me the most recent cards first uh, and that is very helpful for me because i'm oftentimes looking for a newer card or newer cards are the ones i'm least familiar with and so if i'm searching for a kind of thing you know for example the monocolored starter decks i don't look at every single two drop in every single commander deck product that comes out and so most likely if there's going to be a card that's a perfect fit for one of these decks it's going to be from one of these recent products that i haven't paid super careful attention to because i'm pretty familiar with the long history of magic because i've just been playing for a long time and spent a long time looking at scryfall so sorting by you know release date is really valuable i know you have a great tip which is just you can sort by edh rec rank for your results which is Really valuable if you're playing Commander, obviously, because these are the cards that are going to be the most popular in that format, the most popular for a reason. So it's going to help you kind of ignore all of the functionally duplicate cards or cards that are just a little bit too overcosted or whatever for a particular effect. But even if you're not designing Commander decks, that's a really nice... It's the only way you can sort those results that is subjective, right? It's kind of ranking the cards by, like, playability in some broad sense. And obviously, there could be something that doesn't work in Commander, that is perfect for your environment, depending on what you're working on. Or maybe but it's banned in Commander, so perfect example. it's definitely going to fall to the bottom. But it really is a really powerful tool, I think, when you have a big search that you maybe can't figure out a way to whittle down more, but you want to make it a little easier to sort through, because it will kind of sort things by general playability, more or less, with uh, with definitely some some false positives and false negatives there. Yeah, I think false negatives and false positives, those that's a really powerful idea to keep in mind. So the idea is false positives are things that you don't actually want that are going to be matched by your search. So maybe you want things that exile creatures. You might have an effect that exiles and then returns a creature. That's not really the removal spell you're looking for, but it's going to end up in a lot of your searches for things that exile. Or in the case of this EDH rec sort, you know, there's not really the strong positive negative binary, but something may show up really high on the EDH rec rank if it's really good in multiplayer, but you're designing a one on one environment. And so that sort is kind of not serving you perfectly because of uh, the distinction there. True. Uh, and then false negatives being things that you actually are interested in, but don't make it into your search. So it's always kind of a balance when you're filtering through things. Are you going to have a pretty broad search that might include more false positives? Or are you going to have a very narrow search, which is going to have more false negatives, which are just cards that are you aren't going to see at all? And using the sort options is a great way to sort of mitigate some of the that challenge that you're trying to balance by making a broader search, but just pulling the things that are potentially more likely to be relevant to you to the top of that. So sorting top to bottom, you can sort of get a sense for, well, now I'm now I'm into the getting lots of false false positives. So this is no longer a fruitful search. Yeah, and there's some specific cards that are maybe so uniquely designed that they're actually almost impossible, I think, to catch when you're making these searches. They're almost always going to be false negatives. Uh, for example, Urtai's Meddling is a card that comes up mm-hmm. a lot. This is basically a counterspell that effectively suspends the card you're countering. Importantly, no part of this card text says counter spell. It just says take target spell on the stack and then exile it with some suspend counters on it. And so it is functionally a kind of counter spell, but it is almost never going to be caught by any kind of search for counter spell because of the nature of the text on it. Similarly, I, I kind of alluded to temporal isolation earlier. Maybe the weirdest pacifist ever printed. It's a aura that gives the enchanted creature shadow which is a very strange way to write can't block in an environment where there's no other shadow creatures. And then it also has the text prevent all damage will be dealt by enchanted creature, which basically means that attacking is also irrelevant. So that is a pacifism in a lot of environments, but are you going to be able to write a search that's going to include both pacifism and temporal isolation and everything else that kind of falls in between? It's going to be a real challenge. You just add or name temporal isolation to the end of your search, of <laughs> you course. Go. Perfect. <laughs> in this case, actually, it might uh, you might be served by the, the full oracle text because it does have the reminder text for shadow, which includes it can block or be blocked only by creatures with shadow. So if you're looking for block, blocked, full oracle text, you might be able to, to make it happen. But it's, it's important to remember that like your goal here is not to craft the absolute perfect search. That yeah. Your goal is just to find the cards you're looking for. And so you should be using these search tools to that end. And at some point, there'll be diminishing returns where, yeah, you could spend three more minutes figuring out the exact search terms to eliminate those three cards from the 500 you don't care about. Or you could just look through them and just skim over the ones that don't aren't, aren't actually relevant to you. Yeah, in the end, how to search for magic cards. Just just look around. Look at the magic look cards. Look at the magic cards. Look search around through you. them. <laughs> Another thing I'd say about just like generally approaching looking for cards is start with a card that you know, look at the way the text is written, and then try to find other cards. You know, construct your search based around that. So I do this all the time. All the time. So for example, yeah, you're looking at a pacifism. 
pull up pacifism, look at specifically how those words are ordered. And often there's going to be some key them. phrase in there that, yeah, you just copy and paste that, put that into your Oracle text search, and you can find not all, but a lot of the cards that are going to work in the same way. This might sound like obvious, but if you think about more novel kinds of effects, like how exactly is the text on Gonti Lord of Luxury worded so that you can search for other cards that also let you cast cards of your opponents? Like what are the exact words chosen there? There are definitely cards with more novel kinds of interactions that will be be very served by finding a card you know that it does. And if you want cards like that, copying and pasting the relevant part of that rules text or the unique part of that rules text. Right. Can we get into my favorite subject now? Uh, yeah, we can, for sure. So I'm a huge... One of the best things to talk about on geek. audio format. <laughs> <laughs> huge geek for something called regular expressions. And what this is, is a tool that is used in a lot of different contexts, not just for magic cards, but it's particularly useful for magic cards. It's used for, in basically the one context, which is computer programming. <laughs> I mean, com- computer programming is used I, in everything. So I think I, that I think that, that, that I know, works. Sure. But it's just a, a tool that's used for searching text in sort of more complex ways than you can just by saying, I want this text that matches exactly this creature can attack i want something that's kind of along these lines matches this pattern we're not going to read a bunch of regular expressions to you but i do want to just talk a little bit about what they are what is possible to do and then you can go look up the the full text the full search syntax on i don't know whatever regular expression website on scryfall's regular expression page no look it up on our and, article that you wrote well i'm gonna save save that one for last uh <laughs> and i've also written an article introducing regular expressions from the perspective of how to use them to find magic cards which both talks you through what are what what is the 10 percent of regular expressions that is 90 percent of the use cases for magic cards and also gives a bunch of specific examples So as we are searching for cards, we're going to find that a lot of text is similar on a lot of cards, but doesn't match exactly. So if we try our strategy of copy and paste a key phrase from one card, search for that, we might end up losing a lot of cards. A perfect example of this is counterspells. Counterspell says counter target spell, and we can copy paste that into the search bar and find everything that says exactly counter target spell. But that's going to miss a lot of things that have sort of intervening clauses, like negate that says counter target non creature spell, or blue elemental blast that car- counters a red spell. So just with those basic search tools, we're not necessarily going to be able to find everything. What regular expressions allow us to do is search for more flexible patterns and the easiest, like the, the, the most simple use case of regular expressions that really does cover, give you most of its value is just a wild card. Yep. Learn the wild card syntax. The way this works is in order to sort of switch into regular expression mode, you're going to want to wrap your search term in slashes. So again, just go check out the article, check out these other resources to see what that looks like. But you just swap out a few characters and suddenly you've you've unlocked regular expressions and you're in powerful super wizard mode. Now what you can do is you can type in dot star, which is the regular expression sort of magical incantation for any kind of text can go here. So if we do counter target wild card spell, it'll now find any card that includes those words counter target and spell, but any kind of intervening text can go in between them. And that's just going to go so much further to actually finding all of those things that otherwise would be lost by our pure counter target spell search. I am not the regex wizard that you are but uh, this is the one thing i do use regularly is just the wild card it's like anthony said it will get you so much of what you want because basically without regular expressions you have the option of searching the text box for like you said an exact phrase or you could just give it like the words counter and target and right. spell and it would find any text box that contained all three of those words but then you find something that puts plus one plus one counters on something when uh when you, you know, cast a spell when you cast and a spell. then target something and it's else. like okay well that's not what i'm looking for at all and so what the wild cards what you do is basically maintain the order of some series of terms right like and this is i, th- I think one of the most common use cases of this for me is the activated abilities thing being able to say like i want an activated ability that either has a particular kind of cost or a particular kind of outcome being able to say I want this text only if it comes after a colon is Absolutely. very, very common and useful. And so being able to maintain that order while still having the flexibility to say, let other words also appear in here uh, is, I think, the main use case for regular expressions. It gets you a lot of the value of it. Yeah, I said 90%, but it might even be much more than that. It, this is such a ubiquitous tool for regular expressions that in a lot of software that uses them, that's just the icon. That's like, how do you how do yep. you describe regular expression? Well, it's a dot star. Why is it dot star? Don't worry about it. Some programmer decided a long time time ago and that's how we all do it now but it's just it's just means this is a wild card just to make sure we're on the same page star is an asterisk yeah i'm not sure everyone knows that i'm just you know we're 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 trying to challenge our own expectations of what we're taking for granted in this episode and and be clear so i appreciate that shift eight (laughs) (laughs) 
Another really common use case or another great example is say we're trying to build that Gonti Lord of Luxury deck and we want to find everything that exiles and returns creatures so we can get as much value out of Gonti as possible. Like you said, we could just put exile and return as two separate search terms in our search bar, but we're going to get a lot of things where those words appear in different orders or as part of different effects. But if we just do exile wild card return, we're going to get a much more specific list of cards that are going to exile creatures and return them. Uh, and hopefully that'll narrow down filtering for things that are actually relevant. And importantly there, like you could say exile wild card target wild card return but then that's not going to include cards that don't target right like you have your um eerie interlude that exiles all the creatures you control and brings them all back that doesn't have the word target in it and so being as open-ended as you want here you can you can dial in how open-ended you want to be and how much you want to manually sort through the results versus how specific you want to try and get and i would just encourage people to be more open-ended at first like right put start less, broad and go narrow yeah put put less emphasis on you know getting the exact right search term and more emphasis on just like helping yourself as much as possible to the end of finding the cards you want, even if that means you have to manually sort through a bunch of stuff still. Importantly also, you can still combine these regular expression searches with other terms as well. So if we're looking specifically for these flicker cards you can play in your Gonti deck, you can do that exile return full text regular expression search, and you can also throw color identity equals black, or color identity is within black as well. I actually uh, don't know the answer to this. Is the regular expression search only available for the oracle text? Can you do it for other attributes of a card? You can do it for other attributes. So if you want, I guess maybe creature types could be another place you might want to do it's it. It's pretty useful for types. It's also occasionally useful for names. I think the one place it would be super useful on, but you can't do it currently, is on the mana cost. But it may be that would be tricky because mana costs are not always in the same order, right? That is true. Like, uh, it tends to be in Wooburg order, except for in sets that are about guilds or shards or wedges, where oftentimes the mana symbols will appear in a different order. So I wonder how useful it would actually be, or how much you would just miss stuff because of that not being totally consistent. There are a few weird things I've wanted it for. Like if I want to look for extreme mana costs, like things that are full devotion and things like that. But uh, there are other ways you can do that as well. The next really cool thing that regular expressions can do, again, like this wild card is really most of it. Like if you just learn that, you're doing great. And again, don't try and memorize it. Just know it's there and you can go look it up in the article and do some copy pasting when you want it. But the next thing that's really useful is being able to have multiple options for a particular thing. So we've mentioned that maybe destroy and exile are kind of interchangeable in a lot of places. With regular expressions, you can actually say, well, this particular word is one of two options, and very specifically say, destroy or exile target creature. And again, you could do this in a couple other ways. You could just have the two top level terms. You could have destroy target creature or exile target creature. But if you want to get really, really fine grained in, in building a search, this is one other tool that you can use. And of course, you can combine these two things. So maybe you have destroy or exile target creature. Maybe you actually want to allow destroying either creatures or permanents because creatures are a type of permanent. It's a, it's a subset that still applies to removal spells that you're looking for. So you, you can put multiple aura clauses in your particular regular expression search. Uh, and you can also then throw a wild card in there as well. All of these things work together and you can use as much as or as little as you need. And like you're saying, start broad. And if you have too many searches, narrow it down. If you have too few, maybe you think you're missing, throw in some more wild cards, throw in some more options and loosen the search up a little bit. This is maybe a more broad, like, just kind of advice for life, but I, I think... <laughs> okay. I think if you're an invested magic player and you're not familiar with regular expressions, this is a really great opportunity to learn a new skill because it is so much easier and more fun to learn a new skill when it is in a context of something so you true. enjoy and you love. And regular expressions, as Anthony said, are ubiquitous in any kind of computer programming. It's a great skill to have if you're going to be working with computers, which is most jobs. This is a great opportunity just to like, yeah, start using just the very basic regular expressions. And I think you'll, as you just kind of ease yourself in, maybe just use wildcards for a while, you will start to want to do more things and you'll get to learn this syntax. I will say that, you know, the, the syntax that Scryfall provides, like, you know, the shorthand for color and mana value and stuff like that is all very intuitive. Regular expressions, I do not think is intuitive to most people. Like the way it looks can be very, very intimidating because that is true, there yeah. are specific ways to escape characters. So you can indicate this is not a character I'm searching for, but this means something else I'm trying to do. And so the actual result of these things can be somewhat obtuse and perhaps intimidating strings of characters. So this is maybe a little bit more unapproachable for the average person. But if you're interested at all, if you are interested in doing any kind of computer work in the future, maybe you're a student or something, Take this as an opportunity to use magic as a way to learn something that uh, will be very useful in the rest of your life. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, while we're going down this tangent, I use regular expressions all the time 
in my magic life, not just for searching for cards, because as a magic player, I just have like text files all the time. You know, I got this list that exported from Cube Cobra that's in one format, but I want to upload it to DC- TCG player to the mass uploader, but they need a slightly different format. Or I have, you know, a CSV that I got from deck stats or, you know, just all these like different sources. And it comes up all the time that I end up with, well, the data isn't really formatted the same way. Can I like strip out all the uppercase set symbols from this column of text? Or I need to add a number to the beginning of all these rows. I feel like every day I'm formatting some text file with regular expressions to move some set of magic cards from one place to another. It's it's just super useful. I don't it's, Once it's, you learn it it is like a super magical. It yeah. really feels like a su- being a super super guy. <laughs> it's, super it's, person. it's the kind of thing that it's one of the only places where I feel like you really feel the promise of computers. <laughs> right. You're like you know, whenever you're doing some like tedious task on a computer, it's like, well, what do what do computers even help me out with here? Oh, great, I'm over here like manually copying things from a cell in an Excel spreadsheet to some other like place. This feels awful. Regular expressions is a way that you can actually be like, yes, computers are incredible, and look how much time it saved me to just go bleep bleep bloop instead of doing a bunch of things manually over and over again. That's the real thing is I love regular expressions, but more than that, I hate people doing repetitive tasks on computers because computers are good at doing repetitive tasks. That you is the it. thing they do. So you should actually allow the, the tools to help you. You heard it here. Anthony hates you if you're doing a repetitive no, task on no, a computer. No, I hate, I hate the repetitive <laughs> task and I hate that you're doing it and I want, I want it to be better for you. I want better for you. Uh-huh. A few other things that regular expressions can do for you is there are sort of special sequences of characters that match different types of characters. One example that comes up pretty frequently in Magic Cards is numbers. Uh, You can type in this backslash D, which says, I want a number here. And that can be really useful if you're looking for damage spells or things like that, where you know that there's going to be a number, but you don't know what specific number. You don't care what number. Again, I would just start simpler and just throw in a wild card. You know, deals damage is going to catch most of those as well. But if you do want to be more specific, you have the option to construct really specific uh, expressions to find particular types of effects on cards. Yeah, for example, the wild card would catch things that said deals that much damage. And the number selector would only find things that said deals and then a literal number damage. And that's a great example, I think, too, of how unintuitive regular expressions can be backslash d means any number it means a digit so it's simple well but it can be multiple digits right well no it's only going to match one digit character so technically you need backslash d plus if you want more than one character it's yeah you go look up the reference just know it's possible (laughs) to do these kinds of things and then when you want to look for hey I, i care about text that has numbers in it in a particular way then go look it up or tweet at me i don't care or if you want to find things that are do double digit damage you can just do slash d slash d and uh that'll find you double digit you're numbers. learning you're learning another one that is super useful it comes up a lot is word boundaries there's another one of these weird little sets of characters that indicates the boundary between two different words which is a little bit maybe difficult to understand but it means when a word hits a space character so it's the end of the word but it also means if a word hits a period or a hyphen or some other non-word character This comes up a ton in words that sometimes get embedded in other words. So maybe you're looking for artifacts. You want every card that references artifacts, but you end up with a bunch of results for non-artifacts. You know, destroy target, non-artifact, permanent, which is not at all what you're looking up. It's like the opposite of what you're looking for. But if you just put this special word boundary right at the beginning of that, it'll mean non-artifact won't get matched because there's not a word boundary there. You could also just put a space before artifact, but that's going to miss things that start with the word artifact. Yeah, exactly. You can also get, and here's where the syntax gets really wild, but really specific about, I'm interested in a word when it is not preceded or not followed by other words. So we can do the same thing. Fortunately, word boundaries cover that case for non-artifact, but if it was non-hyphen artifact, you wouldn't catch that. So again, go copy and paste these weird strings of characters to do particular things. One really specific example that this comes up is if you're looking for removal spells, but not blink spells. So you might have exile target creature, That's also going to give you all the cards that say exile target creature and then return it later on. You can explicitly say, I want cards that say exile target creature, where the word return never follows it in the rest of that paragraph. So regular expressions are awesome. They're super deep. You can do all kinds of weird, funky stuff. They kind of have this magical reputation among people that do sort of computer programming and things like that as well, because they can get both confusing in in terms of looking at them and trying to read and write them, but also in the way that they behave can sometimes be confusing. But the power is just incredible. So I think that if you're especially trying to build really specific theme decks or you want to just be really comprehensive about finding all the options for your cube, uh, I would definitely advocate for learning a little bit about them. 
I think another reason they have this kind of magical reputation is oftentimes the result of a decent amount of work is like a very short string of weird characters. Mm-hmm. You spend, you it know, looks like a little you magical spend 30 minutes building a regular expression and all you've done is like select the right string of punctuation marks and like weird characters to uh, result in this like gobbledygook that actually is, like you said, a magical incantation to summon the exact text you want. And I would also, maybe more than looking at what the particular tools are, is in addition to the, the article that just describes how to use regular expressions, there's a quick reference of just a bunch of different examples of things you can do with a description of what they actually mean. And that can be an easier way to read through and sort of get a, get a sense for what's possible. So just looking at a few examples, you can find triggered abilities that specifically make tokens or creatures with partner, but not partner with every single card that has cycling one specifically different land cycling types of abilities or activated abilities that grant particular keywords all these kinds of things are possible and Can you a lot not more find cycling one specifically with just regular search terms uh so if you do just cycling one there might be like cycling one in a red so you want to make sure that you uh, are okay, omitting some of those there. yeah okay but again this is sort of the 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 biggest thing that we would advocate is when you're looking for things, go incrementally and try things out as you go. So yeah, maybe you just start with cycling one and realize that there's a bunch of false positives that you're getting in your search. And first option is maybe there's like 10 options. You can just read through them and ignore them. But if you are getting hundreds of results you don't want to look through, go to the next step, try out a few other more advanced searches. So yeah, I think Anthony and my goal is just to make you all love magic even more by being able to search through the cards and find the ones you want so you can Get to the fun part, which is designing your cube or your commander deck or your battle box or whatever it is you're working on. I, Anthony's I think, smirking I think the because fun part the fun is part the part is writing the regular expressions. <laughs> but you're uh, you're maybe a special butterfly there. Maybe not everybody enjoys that part the most. I mean, but I think you put it well that it's really one of those parts of computer programming. A lot of it does feel bleak and tedious, but it, it just makes you feel so powerful. I think it was when one you of figure the... it out, it feels great. You're like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was it. one of those things that really made me fall in love with this kind of technology. I have one tip to close with, which is just uh, I mentioned earlier that I was appending all of my searches on Scryfall with not digital for a while. And then I realized actually Heavenly Evan, listener of the show on Twitter, mentioned to me that you can actually, if you have a Scryfall account, just sign in. And then in your settings, you can say always exclude these kinds of cards. There are a couple other settings you can exclude there. So um, I think by default, what they call extras are excluded, which is like uncards and other stuff. And if you want those included in your search, you can include them by default. So there's other like settings you can set globally. And I would spend a little bit of time doing that because if you do only care about certain subsets of cards in your magic life, like I don't play digital magic, so no digital card is ever going to apply to any environment I'm working on. I'm happy to just exclude those uh, at a global level on my account. Yeah, I would also point out that a lot of these tools, especially, you know, filtering by mana costs and colors and things like that, are applicable to a lot of other sites. Scryfall is so ubiquitous that now Cube Cobra and even Arena has implemented some of these features. So if you're familiar with some of these tools, they'll apply there. So if you want to filter out your decks or filter out your cubes based on particular attributes, you can also just use these to answer a lot of questions like what's my distribution of different colors or different mana costs and things like that. Yeah, I use these on Cube Cobra almost as much as I use them on Scryfall itself because I am oftentimes just want to know exactly how many cards in my cube do this for sure uh that's a very common thing and so you could also use this to like very quickly tag your cube so if you want to like tag all the removal in your cube for example you could do it manually and go through and look at every single spell and figure out which one that'll make me mad (laughs) but then anthony gets furious somewhere he's just steaming he's in the angry repetitive computer task when you could be using regular expressions yeah or or you could write a regular expression that finds those things i don't know i don't know if cube cobra actually does support regular expressions but you can do that sort of incrementally and say let's Search for things that have destroy, exile or have destroy exile, or yeah. whatever. And then if you're uh, running temporal isolation, make sure you catch that one manually. Don't miss. Never miss <laughs> temporal isolation. Last thing I want to say is that, uh, you know, we we obviously love Scryfall as players. It's uh, invaluable to us for designing cubes, designing battle boxes, finding cards we're looking for. Also, as people that make stuff for the community, make the maps, make our website, make this podcast, Scryfall is just an invaluable resource and allows us to do all kinds of things that if it didn't exist, we just couldn't do. Being able to integrate with their API, which is very well documented and very well done. People have often said that the magic content space is built on the shoulders of Scryfall, and it's totally true. If Scryfall were to go away, uh, almost everything you love in the magic world would stop working overnight because it is essential for all of us that are out here making stuff. So Scryfall does have a Patreon. You can join their Patreon and support them financially. They also just have a one-time donation page on their website at scryfall.com slash donate where you can just give them some money. You can also do it via PayPal or Cash App. 
you know, if it's a if it's a thing that you also love and get a lot of joy out of, I think you know throwing them a few bucks the same way you would tip your bartender or whatever is uh, is totally reasonable. Scryfall has to stay around forever. <laughs> we have we have to we magic, have to magic will be over. It'll collapse if we lose Scryfall. I mean, like we said, we spend more time looking at Scryfall than playing Magic. So uh, should maybe give them almost as much money as I spent on Magic cards. That. Well, that's a good way to frame it. And if you do join their Patreon, there's a bunch of very smart people in their Discord that if you're like, hey, I'm trying to find this really specific search. Smart people like Anthony. Smart Anthony's going to help will you. Jump. No, they're, I am not the fastest with the, here's the regular expression that you need for your particular search, unfortunately, but I try really hard. <laughs> Thanks to Scryfall for all the hard work you do. And hopefully you've learned something in this episode, even if it's just one little tip here or there. You know, these little tips add up and eventually just make your Scryfall life that much easier. And really what it does is it reduces the barrier to you saying, I'm going to go find this kind of card or this find this kind of effect. If you think about it and it feels unattainable or impossible to do, then you're just not going to do it. Whereas if you know you have this power, then you'll make it work. You'll find the cards you're looking for and this enormous corpus of magic cards becomes accessible to you, which it's going to only become more and more important as we get more and more cards. I think we've all seen the graph maybe of the number of new cards printed year over year and how much that graph has just hockey sticked in the past couple years. So if this trend continues, there'll be like 200,000 magic cards in like three years. So all the more important that we have the ability to search through all of them. Anthony, do we want to steal a bit from one of our favorite magic podcasts and uh, end on me giving you a random art from a Scryfall card and seeing if you can figure out what it is? I love that segment, and I feel like one in five times I know the card just from Megan or Maria's description of the art, and that makes me so smug, and I'm like, oh, yeah. But also, you did a great job describing the art of this card. (laughs) I feel like I do, too, and then I'm like, man, do I just know that many more magic cards? But I feel like maybe now. So I just did the first random one. Well, I feel like we're we're unique in, in doing a lot of cube design and things like that where we are very interested in a very broad range of cards whereas if you're playing standard there's like all this draft chaff you just don't care about or whatever the name of the card is not in the url so i just dropped it in our discord channel this is the first one that came up when i hit random card oh okay so i'm looking at a bat this is obviously a black card it's holding a snake (sighs) it's a really well rendered bat this is a beautiful painting it's kind of got its wings spread out is the artist thanks jeff simpson um i feel like i know this card i want to say is this from amonkhet block maybe Uh, it's It's not not amonkhet block blighted bat i also know a little bit bats kind of have a, a particular sort of mechanical flavor in magic it's it's gonna have flying i'm gonna guess it costs three and a black and it has an activated ability that somehow drains life or something like that Okay. It's one in a black. One in a black? That's it's, a tiny bat. It's a one-two with flying first strike and haste. That is the full rules text. It's a Gurmag Swiftwing from Cons of Tarkir. Okay. I did not know this card. Yeah. I feel like I've heard the name, but I would not have gotten this one either just by looking at the art. So your chance to show off your smug art magic skills uh, is thwarted by the card randomizer. Perhaps easier when you're a, a listener than actually in the hot seat. All right. I think you doing it to me too? It's a little bit easier maybe? Oh, boy. Ugh. So I'm looking at a vampire, clearly, wearing some uh, decorative armor. With really class- intense armor. Really intense armor. Huge sort of, like, brooch. <laughs> I'm going to call that a brooch. That brooch is bigger than his face. I don't know how he would stand up. I guess he's a vampire, so he's got, like, super strength. Uh, the the setting here, just from the background, is very clearly, to me, Innistrad, the plane. Not just because he's a vampire. That's I mean, there's vampires on a couple magic planes, especially popular in Innistrad, but that church stained glass window, that's, I feel like, the exact stained glass window from Endless Ranks of the Dead. I feel like I know that stained glass window. I'm going to guess this is actually a vampire from a commander product from one of the recent commander sets associated with Midnight Hunt or Crimson Val, probably Crimson Val, on account of the fact that this looks like a vampire attending a wedding. I would be totally guessing at the rules text of this card, though, so I'm not going to bother. I don't know this card. Uh, so this is actually Edgar Markov from the main set, the headline card, uh, the double face guy that turns into Edgar Markov's coffin on the other side. But it's one of the alternate booster fun alternate oh, illustrations. See, that's, so how they, that's how they get That's me. how they get you. So this is Edgar Charmed Groom, but just a different art. One of the, the three different options. Yeah, magic's really, <laughs> magic's going this game away. Has, this game has gotten harder <laughs> <laughs> now that there are so many different options. Well, Megan and Maria, you make it look easy. Check out Good Luck High Five if you want some more random art action. But that's it for this episode of this podcast, Lucky Paper Radio. All of our music is produced by DJ James Nasty. All the magic cards are produced by Wizards of the Coast. All the magic cards are categorized and made searchable by Scryfall. And this podcast is made by us thinking hard about magic cards and then speaking into microphones about it. Thanks for writing those articles about Scryfall, Anthony. Hey, thanks for to Scryfall for existing and making all of magic playing reasonable. 
fun little uh, peek behind the scenes at some of our analytics. So we uh, we have a Google Search Console enabled on our website, which lets us see how we're showing up in search results across the internet. You know, this is not something we really optimize or care about at all. We make no money from the site, so it's more of like a curiosity for us to look at. And uh, because of your Scryfall articles, we show up in millions of searches for the word Scryfall, and obviously. Our site is very small. Articles are very narrow, so not that many people click on it. So it basically like ruined all of our search result traffic. Oh no! If I want to look at it, I have to filter out Scryfall because like ninety nine percent of our search traffic by impressions is for something people related that are to this. Just term, actually term looking for Scryfall, and they, they just don't want to find Scryfall. Look at the tenth result and, and depend. Yeah, and you were like literally the tenth result at the bottom of the page. Whenever it looks at it, maybe a little peek in just how popular Scryfall is. You know, we're just we get to see a little shred of that iceberg, and uh, it's uh, it's overwhelming. Yeah, that's the real thing is is I love regular I can't say this word today. I love regular